Okay. Um, yeah, after digesting the film, uh, you know, a lot to like, a lot to clean up at the same time. Um, I do think, you know, each week you want to get into this mindset of improving week in and week out. Uh, defensively, really pleased with just sound. They give you a lot schematically and where the guy's eyes were, fits, tackling, um, pretty good offensively. Uh, you know, again, starts up front, a couple of early hits in the run game were, were huge to get us momentum going. And, and through the, throughout the night, I thought DJ made some good decisions with the ball. Again, you go back-to-back -back games without giving the ball away is some solid stuff. And then I was pleased really with the second half. A lot of guys played, you know, got into the game. Um, which was awesome to see, you know, in a program, you got a lot of guys that, that practice. And so the, for them to get an opportunity to go out there and play was great uh, atmosphere. Thanking Beaver Nation again, I thought it was great with the energy in the place. And uh, hopefully their their experience went went really well. I'm looking forward to getting back at home again. Uh, counting on the crowd to, to help us out. This is a good team we're playing. San Diego State's got some pride in them. You know, the last few years played really competitive in this against this conference. No Brady Hoke well, have those guys ready to play, physical group um, that play with pride. And, and so we're, we know we got a challenge ahead of us. Uh, defensively, um, what's exceeded your expectations? Anything? You know, I think um, a couple guys pop out. I mean, I think Jaden Robinson has played at a high level in back to back games. You know, he had some experience from last year, but he's, he's definitely taken a step, challenging and, and doing some stuff. I think the line of scrimmage we had. Anticipated, hopeful that we can make it make it difficult, and those guys did. I mean, Sione played really physical. Hodge had a great game. Joe Golden, um, those guys at the line of scrimmage have been been pretty solid. When do you uh, make a decision on on Aiden going beyond four games? Yeah, um, kind of when we get to that point. We talked about it early. We wanted to hopefully get him in the game, and that's happened the last two. Uh, right now, it's kind of week to week depending on the game plan and who we're, who we're playing and, and that kind of thing. Um, but we won't we won't hesitate to, to keep putting them out there. If that's, again, it's a mutual conversation between uh, you know, what he wants and, and how much we can get him in. How much did you feel like he, he grew in this last game from week one? I thought he played well in week one for the series he got uh, or two. Um, made some plays in this one again. I think he's going to the right spot with the ball. Um, uh, his athleticism shows up, so I think he's pretty comfortable and confident when he's out there. And I was going to ask, did you get any sort of explanation on the on that um, the chainsaw deal where they had the warning? Did they say anything to you? Uh, it, it was really brief on the field. The explanation was more of a game operation, stadium noise, uh, and they were in communication with them. Um. Depending on how things play out, this is a San Diego State program that you may be seeing a, a lot more of in the future. Does that thought ever cross your mind as you're preparing for a game like this? Not a ton, no. I mean, you, you, you're locked in kind of on this week approach and this week where they're at, um, where we're at. We, we're going to play at 1230 in Reeser. Um, got a lot of respect for them. Um, look, West Coast football, you know, Mountain West, current Mountain West teams, the, those guys are competitive, have beaten whatever described Pac-12 teams multiple times the last three years. So uh, that's what we think about. Is it helpful to have tape of their game last week against UCLA as you pre as you prepare for them? And uh, and what did you see uh, and offensively and defensively from San Diego State? Yeah, it definitely helps to have tape against multiple opponents. They've played three games now. I thought they looked good on tape. A couple of, again, short yardage play. They got the ball on the one-inch yard line, and they don't get a score. I think that game's a little bit different after that. Um, and so, again, they they can go toe to toe physically, line of scrimmage both sides with really anybody, and so they got our their respect and attention there. Schematically, defensively, they give you a lot uh, movement at the line of scrimmage, pressure package, uh, challenge you in the back end. So um, that's a, what we've seen on tape. Eight Pac-12 teams ranked in the top 25 this week. Multiple wins against Power Five opponents. What, what are your thoughts on the conference where it's at right now and, and the challenge ahead for, for your team? Yeah, you know, going into the season, thought that this thing was going to be competitive Pac-12-wise. Again, a lot of talk about the quarterbacks. I think that's shown up. Those guys are good players uh, throughout the league. Um, so we know it's going to be challenging moving moving forward. But, again, it goes back to being locked in on, on this week, and we'll, we'll get to those guys down the road. Coach, six different receivers have got touchdown passes for you guys over the last couple of weeks. How much more does this new depth at the receiver position really help you guys 
offensively and help obviously a, a new quarterback like DJ kind of get adjusted to the system when he has, you know, six different guys, five different guys that he can rely on to get open and make big plays at any moment during the game. Right. You know, after after two games, yeah, the ball's been distributed. We do like to play multiple guys at a particular position, receiver, but also at tight end, even rotate a little bit O-line wise and backfield gets rotated. So you want to have some depth. I do think DJ quarterbacks got some confidence in multiple guys out there. Um, and so that's a good thing. Um, and so hopefully moving forward, we got as the season goes, you're just going to need more than one or two guys at a position. I know it's obviously early on, but do you think that's already kind of a, a big difference from last season to this year, just just the impact that the receivers are already making? Again, even Ray Haw's touchdown on Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. he got some separation to allow DJ to make the throw. Is that kind of a change you've already noticed from years past? Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a small sample size in regards to the, the two games. We're not – we're into it. If we got multiple guys that can make plays, we feel like we've got that. Um, and if we can keep some consistency, rhythm, timing with multiple guys, we'll, we'll definitely do it. You're also one of the few teams in the nation that still hasn't turned over the ball and have also obviously gone a couple turnovers yourself. How important is that? Yeah, I know. Not, sorry about that. Knock yeah. on some wood that continues on. But how important is that, especially when you're, you know, just getting your feet wet with these first couple of games and trying to bring in that confidence as you get ready for Pac-12 play here in just, what, another week or so, basically? It, it's a good thing, obviously, not tur turning the ball over, especially early in the season. Again, we talked a little bit. We don't do a ton of live reps, right, ball carrying, tackling in August. And so your first couple of couple games you're still feeling that out and so far so good um, again we're not going into games of the ultimate goal is just oh don't turn it over we got a mindset of we want to be aggressive um, but after two we'll take it um, I'm sure we're going to turn it over at some point throughout this season but the longer it goes the better so if you do turn it over you won't blow a gasket <laughs> that's a I'm try not to depend on depending on how we turn it over uh, but no I anticipate we'll probably have one or two. Can you speak to Anthony Gould's situation? Feeling confident that, uh, this weekend, final final call by the by the end of the week, but uh, currently he's projected to, to be fine unless we take a turn for the worse. Lee, um, playing off that Calvin yeah. Hart. Same, uh, projected to feel good. We'll, again, we'll make that call toward the end, but if he can progress like he has, we feel confident. Anyone else on Saturday? Um, Jack Connie might not. He, uh, he he got a high ankle, um, but we'll see toward the end of the week. Um, I think that's it. I, I did actually never even look to see if if Alton Julian played against San, San Jose, but he did get in this game. What did you What did you think? Yep, about uh, how he's played? worked off some rust. Got in kind of in the fourth quarter. It's great to to see him out there. Long long road to recovery. I still think he's got um, a ways to go to can be completely back to where he was whatever that was, a year and a half ago. But he did get in and did some did some good things. After you watched the, the film, watching what Isaac did in the game, what, what, what stood out to you? Uh, you know, he was in his fit correctly. We did some movements up front, uh, got into the backfield to create some havoc. And, you know, he wasn't alone on creating that havoc, but the opportunity was there for him and got some tackles for loss. Maybe it's a little early, but what, what have you learned about watching the UCLA-San Diego State film? Um, you know, like I said, the physicality San Diego State uh, runs with, how competitive they are. They make it physical. They're going to challenge you and, and then tackle. Um, quarterback can move and create um, with his feet, but make some good throws down the field. Uh, they can run the ball, not just off of the UCLA week, but the previous. So they got a good rushing attack. Coach, for somebody like Ray Ha to get his first catch, and it's a touchdown catch, and all the time he spent in the program, what did you know? What did that mean to you and the guys to see that moment for him? Yeah, uh, it, it was great because he has. He's been around here. He's been contributing. You know, he's been playing a lot of receiver ball. hadn't gone his way. Uh, willing to play a lot on special teams and contribute that way, and so it was fun for him to be highlighted, getting a score like that because he's put a lot into this program. Your inside linebackers with Calvin out. I mean, how did you feel that Melvin played there? Uh, mm -hmm. John Miller a little bit. I mean, it looked like they got some important reps. Yeah, Melvin played really well. Uh, Makai started the game and then rotated Melvin to get in uh, and did some really productive, was in the right spot. We were pleased with, with kind of how he played. John Miller's played quite a bit, and so it was great for those, um, those guys. And we're going to need him. You know, Easton obviously is a really good player. Um, but it'll be nice to get Calvin back and creating this depth we have. 
You got Atticus Sappington, a couple of field goal opportunities. The operation clean, right? I mean, yep. those were important reps for those guys. Right? It was, um, and he, he banged two field goals through. Obviously, the PAT thing. Um, I think he's kicking with confidence. He did a good job on kickoff the distance. You know, kicking it out of the end zone most of the time, but also the accuracy when he, it was in play. So. <laughs> Um, he's going to be a needed part. He's not alone with that. You know, Josh is holding for him, and Dylan's snapping it. Um, and so that operation was clean. And Isaiah Newell getting some carries, and he's, he looks physical. I mean, he's, he's kind of an upright style, but he, he delivers a pretty good blow at the end. Yep, it was great for him to, to get in, get some, get some carries that way. We got him in the game a little bit of like a fullback-ish type of look. Um, so, and again, you're just going to need these guys. After week two, you need guys continue to grow and develop. Newell's proven. He's done it uh, last year, carrying uh, the ball a decent amount. And feel like we got three three backs there. And even Jake Reichel running down on kickoff and making some plays was awesome to see. Got a couple of carries. So, it's all good. I know DJ obviously didn't get a lot of attempts under his belt, you know, last Saturday because it was a blowout win. But how do you make sure that – you know, potentially he's still getting the amount of reps he needs to into these games to feel, you know, confident. Practice obviously is a good outlook, but it's really the game time situations where you really figure out what you're learning for a quarterback. So how do you make sure that he's still getting the amount of reps that he needs, especially, again, as we continue to progress in the season? Yeah, you know, you, you play the game to win, and how this last game went, I mean, it just was what it was. And so you're not going to sacrifice – you know, extended play for him when the, you know, those other guys with opportunities. We feel like he's in a good spot right now, playing with confidence, going to the right spots, decision making. Um, and so that even the, I think about the end of the half, we wanted to try to create a, the two minute there and that didn't go well. So that's a way to not just DJ, but all of, all that offense to operate. So we got to take advantage of that and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely need the passing game this weekend. Does the light show impede anything you're trying to do on the sideline? I don't know about impede. It's added energy. Could be a distraction. I think I th flashed a few guys in the second half, kind of in a jumbotron dancing and what whatnot. Again, we want these guys having fun. Um, I think it's great fan experience. Uh, so it's it's a good thing. Yeah, I think the uh, appreciation for people showing up, bringing energy. I uh, felt like the thing was close to full well before kickoff, which was which was a fun atmosphere. And, again, playing at home, it needs to be an advantage, and, and we're going to need it again against a really good team here at 1230 Saturday. Thanks. Thanks.